6.2, the unit circle and circular functions continued. Now you'll see that I have a little drawing on the board. And this is an interesting drawing because basically what we're going to do off of this drawing is we're going to relate the trigonometric functions as lengths of line segments. So if we look at what we've got here, basically O is at the origin. We have, basically you can look at this as being the first quadrant. So we have a unit circle, an arc of the unit circle, which is at one zero. I think I lost, I lost my R on there, sorry. That should be R at that point. So we've got R at one zero, and we've got S at zero one. We have this angle theta creating a terminal side of an angle. So going up across, where that crosses the arc of our unit circle is P. At that intersection, we drew a line straight down, so right angle to the line OR, the ray OR. And that intersection we are calling Q, where the arc intersects this x-axis, we drew a vertical line. Where it crosses over the ray OP, we call that point V. We also drew a horizontal line where the arc crosses the y-axis, and that horizontal line we call S U. Where the vertical line that we created coming off of our arc and the horizontal line coming off of our arc, where they meet, we call T. And where that horizontal line crosses our ray OP, we're going to call U. So now we're going to be able to find our trig functions based on these and the different lengths or line segments. So basically, we may have OQ as a length, OR, OP, PQ, VR, TV, TU, and we could use any of those we want. So let's see if we can go through and figure this out. So if I want sine, of theta. Sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So opposite over hypotenuse. Well if I have theta here, opposite over hypotenuse is PQ. That looks more like a theta than a Q over the hypotenuse, OP. Now OP, or I should say point P, is on our arc of our unit circle. So that means the length OP is actually equal to one. So sine of theta is the length of PQ. Well, cosine of theta, same idea, it's adjacent over hypotenuse, so OQ over OP, OP still being 1, so OQ. Tangent of theta. Now, careful, we could say, well, that's sine over cosine, so that's PQ over OQ, but that's a ratio of sides. I want to get this down to one side. So let's see what I can do with that. Well, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So what I'd like to do is find a triangle that, or a point that creates a triangle 
that the opposite side is some length, but the adjacent side is one. And I see here that from zero to, sorry, from O to R is one because that's on that unit circle arc and that's adjacent. So VR or RV is opposite. So I can say RV over OR, OR is equal to one, so RV. Cotangent of theta. Well, now we're gonna to have to be a little more creative because we can't just flip this because that's gonna make it one over RV, which isn't gonna help us. We wanna get it to a certain length. So we're doing that. Well, let's see what we can do here. So that would be adjacent over opposite. So adjacent over opposite. Well, what can I do here? So what if I look at this? Okay, adjacent over opposite. Sorry, Drew, look, looking at my thinking the wrong way. There we go. Okay, so I'm looking here and going, well, wait a second. Adjacent over opposite, so I want the opposite side to be equal to one. Well, I can use alternate interior angles. Notice theta is here. Well, since these two lines are parallel to each other, that is also theta. So opposite is going to be OS, which is 1. Adjacent is going to be SU. So adjacent over opposite, SU over OS. OS is equal to 1. So SU, the length SU. And yes, I'm just putting my letters in alphabetical order, it doesn't matter. You could do that as US or SU. You can do this as VR or RV. It doesn't matter, same length. What about secant theta? Well, we're dealing with secant. Secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. So I want the adjacent to be one, and I want the hypotenuse, hypotenuse to be some value, so I see hypotenuse OV over OR, OV over OR, OR is equal to 1, so OV. And then the last one is cosecant of theta. So that's hypotenuse over opposite. So I want the opposite to be equal to 1. Okay, so I see opposite is equal to one here. So hypotenuse would be OU over OS. So OU over OS, OS is equal to one, so we have OU. So now we can define all of these trigonometric functions based on a line, a line length, or we can do the opposite 
given a certain angle, we can find all these line lengths. So what if I say theta is equal to 30 degrees? Well, if theta is equal to 30 degrees, we can find all the exact values of these line lengths because we know that when theta is equal to 30 degrees, that sine is going to be one half, right? Sine of theta of 30 degrees is equal to one half. Right? Cosine of 30 degrees is equal to square root of 2 over 2. And tangent of 30 degrees is equal to wait a second, just not square root of 2 over 2, that would be 45 degrees, sorry. Square root of 3 over 2. And tangent of 30 degrees is going to be sine over cosine, so 1 over square root of 3 or square root of 3 over 3. So we can come through all these and do the same thing. So we can now say that PQ is equal for theta equal to 30, PQ is equal to 1 half. OQ is equal to square root of 3 over 2. RV is equal to square root of 3 over 3. SU is equal to square root of 3. If we take the reciprocal of that, we get, we get 3 over the square root of 3. When we rationalize that, we get 3 square root of 3 over 3. The 3's cancel out, leaving a square root of 3. Secant is... 2 over square root of 3, or 2 square root of 3 over 3. And cosecant is 2, so OU is 2. So PQ is 1 half, OQ is square root of 3 over 2, RV is square root of 3 over 3, SU is square root of 3, OV is 2 square root of 3 over 3, and OU is 2. Now, to be perfectly honest, I have never had to use this anywhere in real life. But it is kind of interesting, and it's a topic to be covered in this course. So it is interesting to note that we can put all this together, dealing with a couple parallel lines, the unit circle, an angle, and take advantage of those things to come up with this. But whether you use it or not, who knows? Not bad to know, though. All right, so let's get this out of the way. Now I want to talk about velocity and angular velocity. Okay, so we can say linear velocity or linear speed and angular velocity or angular speed. So linear velocity, V is equal to distance s divided by time, right? So it's distance over time, that's linear velocity. Angular velocity relates rotation to time. So angular velocity, lowercase omega, is equal to theta over t. So with linear velocity, we're looking at the distance traveled over time. With angular velocity, we're looking at the angle change, the change in angle over time. But notice this is still velocity, that's still velocity, this is measuring the actual distance that's coming, the angular change. If you think of a bicycle wheel,
velocity, if you look at one point on this wheel, or actually, let's put it near the bottom, right? If you look at a point on this wheel, one rotation of this wheel moves us one whole circle, right? So our velocity is dictated by how fast this point is moving in space. It's physical distance. One full rotation of this wheel moves not only this point that full circumference, but it moves this wheel that full circumference. Whereas angular velocity says, how far did it move around in angle? It's angular movement. One full rotation, two full rotations, three full rotations. So it's not the distance, it's the number of rotations or fractional parts of rotations. Okay, I do want to put one clarification here that omega just cannot get an omega to come out of there. There we go. Omega is in radians per unit time, unit of time. So again, we're dealing with theta in radians, just like we did when we were dealing with the arc, when we were dealing with the area of a sector. So theta is in radians, so omega, our angular velocity, is in radians over unit of time. So if we have degrees, we're going to have to convert it to radians first. Okay? Also want to make note, we're just going to get this out of the way here, that we said V is equal to S over T. <coughs> well, we know that S is equal to R theta, so that's equal to R theta over T. And we have theta over t is equal to omega, so is equal to r omega. So velocity, the distance, linear velocity, is distance over time is equal to the radius times the angle change over time is equal to the radius times the angular velocity. So all of these relate, and when we're solving a problem dealing with angular or linear velocity, they all become, can become part of it. So let's move these equations off to the side so they're readily visible, but not in our way. So V is equal to S over T. Omega is equal to theta over T. V is equal to S over T is equal to R theta over T is equal to R omega. Just to put those off to the side. So let's work, look at the problem. Suppose that P is a circle of radius 15 inches. Okay, so we got this circle P has a radius of 15 inches. And ray OP is rotating with angular speed pi over 12. So that's omega is equal to pi over 12. So we've got R is equal to 15 inches. And that's, of course, radians per second. So, rad per second. Find the angle generated by P at 10 seconds. So we want to find theta when T is equal to 10 seconds.
and the distance traveled by P in 10 seconds. So S at 10 seconds. So we've got this circle, we have this point P going round. We know that this P is traveling at pi over 12 radians per second. We know the radius is 15 inches, and we want to know at 10 seconds what the angle is that we've traveled, and also the distance that we've traveled. So looking at what we have here, I see that we have omega and we have t, which works out nicely because I see an equation, omega is equal to theta over t. So if we're going to find oh, theta, all we have to do is say theta is equal to omega t is equal to omega is pi over 12, t is 10, so theta is equal to 10 pi over 12, is equal to 5 pi over 6. So we found that out, theta is equal to 5 pi over 6. I'm just going to do that in a different color here. So we found theta. Now we want to find S. Well, how do we find S? Well, let's see. S is equal to R theta. We have theta. We have R. So S is equal to R theta is equal to R 15 times theta 5 pi over 6. is equal to 75 pi over 6 well I can divide top and bottom by 3 take us down to 25 pi over 2 or 2 which is okay that's in inches but since we've got a measure, we're trying to find the distance traveled, do you know how long 25 pi over 2 inches is? I don't quickly either, so let's grab a calculator. And do 25 times pi, which gives us approximately 78.5398, etc. Divide it by 2 which gives us 39.27 inches. That's something much easier for me to re relate to. I did not look at this and say that's about oh, just under 40 inches. So that makes sense. So remember, when you're dealing with word problems in real world examples, when we get to measurements of distance, you don't want to leave that in terms of pi. You don't want to leave that in terms of radicals. So go through that and calculate. Whereas when we're dealing with angles in radians, it's perfectly valid to leave it in terms of pi. 5 pi over 6, well, that's the exact angle. If it was in degrees, leaving it in terms of pi would not be kosher. Okay? So there we go. So that's the end of 6.2, the unit circle and circular functions.